So I played ACS, that is the Afrika TV Challengers uh, Star League. And this is an amateur tournament where if you've been in ASL, you cannot play. Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically what it is. It had a lot of signups for it. was played online uh, because of the coronavirus and everything, but at a lot of signups, uh, there was about 200 players total uh, that ended up playing in it. So that's actually, that's pretty big for the amateur tournament. Um, because generally ASL qualifiers get a lot more players because it's just kind of fun. It's ASL. Everyone watches ASL. ACS is really super competitive because, like, there's only a handful of people that are really the level that are going to win it, right? They're the people that you actually know the names of but just don't make it into ASL. Uh, anyway, so it was a lot of players. A lot of players. About 200. So that's, that's really cool. So let me go through the brackets real quick and show. I was in, um, bracket A, Okay. So taking a look down here, um, here I am. Uh, my first opponent, and we'll be going over all these replays real quick. Uh, this guy was a 2300 Zerg player. Uh, I did end up going 2-0 against him. And then I played against this guy. This is Pianist, for anyone who does not know. He's about, I believe he's about 2600 MMR, generally speaking. I know the MMR is kind of weird right now with all the abuse on the ladder and stuff, but Pianist is a well-known player. Uh, and so, yeah, he, that, that did not go so well for me, unfortunately. Um, and he ended up winning the bracket. He only lost one map to this guy in the semifinals, but he smashed the bracket. Uh, and the winner of each bracket goes into the ACS finals at the Afrika TV studio, and it's this coming weekend. Uh, so he'll be one of the four players representing. Uh, I'll, t I'll show you the other brackets real quick. And so this one here, uh, this is um, Ride Sky, I believe. Uh, he's about 2,800 MMR. He's a Terran player. Um, and Ride, Ride Sky is like, he's always like top 10 on the ladder when it's not infested with, with cheaters. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's a very well-known Terran player. Uh, then going to bracket C. Uh, this is Wiko Disco. This guy is a about a 2600, I believe. And, like, people have more than one account. So, like, I did my best trying to find what they are. But he's about 2600 MMR. He's Protoss. Uh, yeah, Wiko player. Protoss. <laughs> um, and then the last bracket here. And this is this is my prediction for who's going to win the tournament. Uh, this is the Protoss player, Mighty. Really well-known. Super respected. He is really really top level right now like he is kind of the next protoss that we're going to see in asl i think everyone agrees on that so uh, the finals is going to be three protoss players and one terran player uh with ride sky generally doing best on the ladder overall uh but yeah three very strong protoss no, I, I definitely respect mighty he is really really good he's got a great style and everything all right so those are the players that will be playing coming up we're going to go over my games real quick here so here is my game number one. Uh, and this is me in the bottom right, of course. And in the top left, uh, his ID was on time is gold. Again, about a 2300 MMR Protoss Polypoid, the first map. Um, you know, I, I played the last week really trying to refine what I wanted to do on each map. Uh, and like what I wanted to do in general in each matchup. So TVZ, my... Uh, well, I'll talk about map two, but Polypoid... I'll talk about map two on map two. Um, but on Polypoid, my plan... Well, this spot you can wall. This is uh, the one spot on Polypoid where there's a ling tight wall where the Marine pops out on the inside. It's, like, fantastic. You should just always do it. So I did that. Anyways, uh, the plan was to go two racks um, and just go into vessels normally, just play a very normal standard macro game. Because I think that's... As long as I get my vessels on time, I think I do pretty well. So... I did, because this is the walled base, this gives me a little bit of an edge in a way. Like, it's the best, I guess the way to put it is, it's the best spot in the map for Terran uh, because of that. There are issues with it. Like, I feel personally like this natural is one of the harder ones to defend against mutas um, because this side kind of sticks way out to the side. You can see how far out the gas is. So it's like a little bit harder to defend there, but also this side is so far away from this side that... It feels like you actually need, like, five turrets here, in my opinion, uh, as opposed to four, which is the current metagame. Anyways, 
you get the quick move out with the bio. So I did the two racks academy rush. You don't need a bunker when you wall in on a tight wall. So I felt very good and happy about that. I threw down a couple scans. So I scanned the natural just to check how his sunkens were going. If there's two sunks, you should never attack. And I scan top right because that is uh, one of the likely places. And then I want to check here with my actual bio force. So I found it. And at this point, I'm like, all right, sick. <laughs> this is where my adrenaline started to flow because I'm like, I should win this game. Uh, obviously, nothing is ever quite so easy. Kills that off. And I just added lots of turrets at this point. Because generally what happens when you kill a base like this... Like, if you kill a third base with the Turax Academy Rush... Uh, and just to put this into perspective, right? Like, the, the actual timing for this against two hatchery play... This is like a very specific build. Where you're getting your third depot after the command center finishes. So this kind of counts. So you can only get four marines before this finishes to keep up your scv production uh it's the reason why i did it is because i had a wall a lot of times i go more marine heavy so you don't die to lings but you don't even have to worry about that with a wall anyways your move out timing has to be at five minutes if you move out at five minutes you have enough time to get to a third base before mutas are out if you move out after five minutes you can't get there in time and the mutas will kill your whole bio force and you're gonna lose the game so anyways i got out there he wasn't playing safe enough so i got to kill this and after you kill it, uh, your marines can't get home. Uh, because they'll have enough mutalisks by the time you kill the hatchery that your bio force is stuck. Uh, unless they went to counter harass, which normally they won't do. Normally they'll just clean up the marines. Uh, so at that point you want to build extra turrets. Because you don't have as many uh, marine forces as you're used to. So I have four turrets here so far. And I made three here. Three here and one here. So I felt very safe because a lot of times what they're going to do is kind of dive in and try to get a lot of damage with their mutas because that's the only thing they have going on for them, right? Okay. So my factory is a little bit later. I like a seven minute factory, but this, I wanted to build the extra turrets because I already had an advantage. You can see over here he is going for uh, Carapace. I already have my plus one. And yeah, I went into Valkyrie. Um, so here specifically, like I saw he was making lots and lots and lots of mutas. And I think what happened was I like scanned here and saw mutas popping. So I decided to go Valkyrie because I thought he was just going to go muta all in. Um, but he actually was going crazy Zerg just with heavy muta, which is, which is fine. Uh, and I don't generally look to go Valkyrie against that, but it's, I think it's fine. It's, but it's not like normally what I'm looking for. You see really good Mula Smiker there. Just massacred a ton of Marines. He's taking some additional bases. I'm popping out my couple Valks. And at this point, I know for sure. Uh, see, I just scanned and I see the Evolution Chamber and I see the Hive. Uh, with the Ultralist Cavern and everything. So... At this point, I know that I need to get into plus two attack as quickly as possible. Uh, in fact, his plus one carapace is almost done. The most important thing is to try to line up your plus two with their plus two. You need to have equal attack to carapace upgrades. And I am making my science facility. So I'm going to be just behind on that upgrade, which is okay. You'll be fine. You just, your move out is a little bit tighter. All right. So I've been in this position a good amount of times because Crazy Zerg is pretty popular. Where I've gone Valkyrie because it looked like Muta, but it's actually Crazy Zerg. And the Valkyries are still useful, I think, here. Uh, my thought process here is I'm going to push out. I'm going to make sure that he has plenty of Sunkens. Which, by the way, I don't know about this base. I could have killed this and I had no idea. Because this, in my brain, this was too greedy for him to make a move like this. See, I'm scanning there. I see tons of Sunks. Checking out here. Tons of sunks. I know I can't break anything. But I also know that he didn't know about my Valkyries until very recently. So what I'm trying to do here is make use of the Valks. So see, I'm going to be able to kill those off. And then I go after Overlords. This is a very specific situation. Uh, to kill off all the Overlords with the, the Valks. But I liked it. I'm still, I'm kind of shocked because I didn't look at this replay afterwards. I just played my next game. But I'm kind of shocked he took this this quickly. 
That was that would have been so easy to kill. So anyways, I'm going up to plus two, and my attack timing will be with plus two. Uh, what you generally want to do is go up to nine barracks. Looks like I don't quite have that here. The uh, Valkyries are very mineral intensive, so that might be part of why I didn't have the money for it, because it looks like 40 SCVs is fine. I should be able to afford. But the important thing here is to hit at plus two attack. All right, so at this point, this all just becomes about this plus two attack timing. I have a huge amount of bio, right? And I need to kill him because if you don't kill them now, they'll go into Defiler and you're dead. If they have actual Crazy Zerg that gets into Defiler, you lose. Um, so I have to go kill. So what I did was I attacked up here and I set my rally point for all barracks here because I'm just, I'm going to kill him or I'm going to lose. A couple D matrixes go in, and obviously I just have so much right now. And GG. Okay, so I won game one. At this point, my adrenaline was pumping pretty, pretty heavily. And game two is going to be on Ascension. Now, here's the problem. I I have veto ascension, or vetoed Ascension on the ladder. Um, Yeah, it's, it's a tough map. So, I didn't really have plans for it. I planned... Basically, my plans were in um, PvP. I was just going to do my very standard play. And TVZ, my idea was, since I haven't practiced it to just be greedy, to just go for uh, a command center first. That was the plan. Because again, I've played like five games on Ascension. I've casted a million games on Ascension. It's such a popular map at the moment. But I didn't, I actually meant to practice it some uh, in the week leading up and I just kind of forgot to unveto it and just played my games because I'm too angry and don't think about it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, also, Command Center First is not something that I ever practice, but this game will go to show you that, uh, like I talk about a lot of times when I'm laddering, where people are like, why don't you mix these things in and like take the risks? It's You don't actually need to practice something so powerful. Uh, Command Center First is really, really crazy, and I actually don't even do it well here, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's pretty wild how strong it is if they don't Zergling Rush you. So there's the command center first. Drone comes up. Killed it off. He's probably a bit nervous here. All right, so he's running around some Zerglings. Let's keep my SCV alive. Going into two racks play. So yeah, here I'm just trying to keep the SCV around a little bit, but he runs in, right? So. This is, this is the thing that goes wrong for me in this game. This is the only thing that went wrong for me here. Is he ran these Zerglings by to be really annoying. And so I lost my Scout SCV because immediately I'm trying to deal with these. Because the timing that he's running this in, he's hoping to slow me down. Like he's scouting what I'm doing, but also if he can slow down turrets, sometimes you can get your Mutas in and do extra damage. So anyways, I'm trying to micro against these, and I get supply blocked here at 44. This is a big supply block I hit, unfortunately, because I'm dealing with these lings. So look. Look how long this is. And finally, depots get started. Dude, that is, inc that is such a long supply block. It's insane. So long. But you can see that even though I was supply blocked this whole time, I have 34 SCVs from Command Center first. <laughs> I just, I have so much money. So we get a lot of turrets. This spot in particular is hard to defend, so I built extra turrets here. Adding my third racks. I'm just trying to play stably and normally. There's my pre-seven minute. So look at this, right? I have my third racks going up, and I got a massive supply block. I have a huge amount of turrets, and I still get my factory started well before seven minutes. If you do a barracks expansion, you are trying so hard to optimize everything to get this started at seven minutes and this started at like 6 40 right so like command center first is is crazy
So the important thing that happens here is my scans. Here, we'll just turn off his vision so we can catch the scans. Okay. So here's my two scans. Hold on. And I see lings coming out. You see that, those two lings leaving right there? That is huge to get a scan like that when he's being this aggressive with the mutas. And you see something like this doesn't look super saturated here. This is pretty normal, I would say. And you see the lings running out. So I was thinking to myself like, oh, he's going to try to crush my army if I walk out. So I'm just not going to walk out. Let's take a look, right? He's rallying up a lot of lings, making a lot of mutas. He's staying very aggressive. I do some more scans here in a moment. Okay. So I did another scan there and saw more lings coming out of here and no drones. So at this point, I know that he's basically all in and all I have to do is live. So I start more turrets. I get another depot in front of here. Make a fire bat for the bunker. And that's that. He was all in. Okay. So we took down that guy. Uh, and then it went to... Um, it went to Pianist. Who, again, this is a well-known 2600 plus. He ended up winning the bracket. Uh, I got a little bit unlucky. I was really, really unhappy. Uh, with this game. Right, so see, he's sending out a probe ridiculously early. So, eight gate in the center. Look at how quickly he gets into my base with this. It's just wild. Painful. Painful. So his micro here is like really, really good. Kills an SCV. I'm not too happy about that. And look at this. There's literally a Zealot in my base. Two, 248. He has a Zealot in my base. He's offensive gas me. He's killed an SCV. He's slowed down this depot that I need for micro. And I have one Marine. This is really incredibly painful. If I had built all my buildings over here, I would have a better shot against this. But this is very difficult to do. He already has a second Zealot out, right? And to put in perspective, like, how much... How, how crazy this is. Like, how quick this is. Um, like, if you make a Zealot in a normal build order, the first Zealot pops out at 2 minutes and 40 seconds or something, right? Wait, am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 2 minutes and 40 seconds if you're going Zealot Dragoon. Uh, so this is just... It's really quick to have a Zealot in your base. And now I have to deal with a Pylon, the Probe running around, a Zealot, and now they fuck up and my Marines bounced into each other there and I couldn't get them through the hole, so I lost an extra one. And he keeps targeting the SCV here. I need a Vulture. And I just can't get it. It's just too much. And that's that. So that was not... That was not a game that I was very happy with. All right, let's watch this. Game two, Ascension. So my plan on Ascension was just to play a normal TVP, just a big macro game. I've, I, I feel pretty comfortable with big macro games. But of course, the very first probe that he makes leaves his base. And he scouts me first with it. So... He's in my base before my depot is done. Right? He's in my base before my depot's done. Offensive gas. Brassing the shit out of my SCVs. And here is the thing that... Here's something that really hurts here. Okay? He scouted me first. And I scouted him second. So I actually have no fucking idea what he's doing. Right? Right? So this is this is a this is extra painful. If I get to his base, I can see exactly what's going on, right? And I can prepare for that appropriately. 
the most dangerous thing that can happen when you get offensive gas on a more than two player map because on a two player map you can instantly scout where they are and know what they're doing but if you try to do something like a quick command center and they go quick range with the offensive gas you die you die every time because they'll have enough dragoons to one shot repairing scvs well before you have siege tanks so you can't repair the bunker and they'll just kill everything that you have so against that you need to kill the gas really quickly and get your gas and then you can start your command center so i get up here and i see it's a nexus and it's like ah crap you know i've already spent all this money on this okay let's go um now i assumed here because he went for the quick nexus that he would go robo before range i was right i didn't see it because i lost my scv but i assumed this would be the case so i decided to just all in him uh with that stupid goliath vulture marine build because i was like well i'm in terrible shape his expansion's so quick everything's bad for me like look at this he's up four probes my command center's not done he has a zealot walker on my fucking base it's rough just keep sending in zealots Made the armory down here. I'm like, all right, well, let's see. So he has a reaver out before seven minutes. Jesus. <sighs> so anyways, I tried to do an attack and the reaver was there waiting. And that was that. Yeah, I picked it off with three rally goons, whatever. So that was it. Uh, so that's how Pianist killed me 2-0 in no time at all. It was it was uh, painful, uh, but yeah, that was my ACS run, and uh, he goes he goes to the offline finals. We'll see how he does. Free Protoss and one Terran in that, and uh, 